Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be looking into Cinemachine again. I did that a while back. Uh, some people have asked how to do a kind of camera system where maybe it's indoors or um, in a place that's built up with like buildings around and stuff. Or just, I don't know, whatever you want to use it for. Where basically, as the character moves around the scene and goes out of view of one static camera, so the cameras don't move, they just rotate, but they stay in the same place. Um, if you go out of view of one camera, it then switches to another camera. Obviously, you'd still have to set up the cameras so that there's always, you know, something seeing every place. But um, this is basically how to switch between them automatically. There's no coding involved for this. I mean, I'm sure there's some coding you could do to obviously um, make it more fancy, I guess, or change certain things. But most of it's just set up using Cinemachine, the uh, package. I'll just show you it quickly after I thank my patrons. Thanks to Michael, Paul Robinson, Fullbomb, and Wesley for their... Uh, donations on Patreon this month. If anyone else would like to help out, then the link is in the description below. So, what it's going to look like is this. Obviously, it's a very simple example. I've got a capsule, um, and as it moves, it gets closer to this wall. Obviously, I mean, I might just write a quick script to uh, move the thing, but it doesn't matter. I can just do it on here. So, as it moves behind this wall, it's going to go out of line of sight from the camera. So, it switches to another camera that I've got over here, which can then view it as it goes on everywhere. And then, as it goes back behind the wall, as soon as it loses sight, it switches to this camera. Now there are parameters you can change to, um, I bet the, the, the um, capsule isn't like teleporting. The reason why there's like a massive, like a gap here when it loses vision is obviously because both cameras still have some overlap that they can see. Um, if you wanted to get it like perfectly switching, I guess you would have to make sure these two cameras don't have any overlap from their rotation. Um, well, from their position, sorry, because the rotation is always fixed to where the player is. So like. Let's say, for example, it was over here. Then that would give you um, a better angle for that, I guess. So like, as soon as you go behind, it's here, and as soon as you go in front, it's like there. Uh, but even then, yeah, there's still some overlap. Like for example, here, um, both cameras can see it, but it only changes. Oops, it only changes really when uh, it goes out of view of that particular camera you're on. So even though the the other camera, VC Cam One, or yeah, VCAM 1 can still see this right now, but the reason it's not changed is because this camera can still see it. So you can also set, uh, I, I'll get into all, well, why, why do I just end the example and set it up and then explain as I'm going through. So don't need anything. Okay, I'll keep the floor. Um, I'll keep the wall. To be honest, we, we don't, this is gonna be quite a very, like, a very quick tutorial anyway. Um, so you've got your floor, you've got your scene, maybe a wall or two, you know, to block the camera's um, thing. So you might put a wall here. And then you know, go spin it around and put one over here, for example. Whatever you want to do, um, and then we can manually move the play around for the sake of this tutorial. So um, we can have a camera here. For now, the main camera, you know, you'll put your post processing on, whatever you want. But you know, just um, get a normal main camera. You should have one in your scene. Um, oops. Okay. These are the walls. I've got nothing special, basically, just the default stuff you can put in a scene. Um, then what you want to do is you want to go to Window, Package Manager, and go get Cinemachine if you haven't already. If you don't have it installed here, then go to All, and go Find Cinemachine. And it's in, yeah, obviously it's in the Package Manager, but if you're on like a really old version of Unity, you might have to get it from the Asset Store. I don't really know, uh, you know, how many people are using the old versions without Package Manager anymore, but I'm sure there's still some people. Um, so if you go to Cinemachine, here it is, yeah. Install, whatever, update. You get it installed, you'll notice we have a Cinemachine tab at the top when you've got it. Uh, and it has all these different cameras. Now, I've explained Cinemachine before briefly, um, and I've done one video on it, but I didn't cover this particular thing. And so you've got virtual camera, which is kind of like, it's just like the normal camera. Uh, free look is to do with, well, it's, I'm not going to go into all the different kinds right now, but the point is we want a clear shot camera because obviously it's trying to get a clear shot of the player if it, you know, that's why it's got the name. So when you uh, you want to create a clear shot camera and by default what that'll do is it'll make it wherever it is so over here um, and it'll also make as a child to it a virtual camera which is the actual you know camera we see through so um, if we press play we're currently looking through this camera which is looking over here, which gives you, that's why it's like there's nothing there because there's nothing in its vision. So what we want to do is we want to set that camera up somewhere where we want one of our, well, where we want our first camera. So let's say we want to get it while it's anywhere here, right? So if we um, go to this VC cam one, you know, we don't really care where the parent is. We can just put that at zero, zero, zero. We want VC uh, cam one, control shift F. So that's our vision, right? Control shift F, you can also, you know, game object, 
uh, a line of view. So that puts the camera here, you have to make sure it's selected. So there's our camera, and if we press play, then we just see through that camera basically. That, that is our main camera now. Um, all these settings here for this is just to do with um, <clears throat> when you're looking at a target, when you're like following something with the camera, so, you know, damping like how smooth it is and stuff. That I'm not here to tweet with those settings, um, to be honest. So we've got this VC Cam 1, and obviously it's a child of this. And as you see, any children that are of type, you know, virtual camera, it lists here and it tells you their priority, which is just reading this priority number. If you change that, then it'll change it in here. So let's say it's 10. We'll, we'll leave this 10 by default. Now we want to follow something. Sorry, no, we want to look at something. So obviously look at just means we'll stay where we are and we rotate to face the thing that we're looking at. So we want to look at the capsule, which is the player. So let's just, you know, call that player and, you know, just wall and wall. It doesn't really matter. Just so I know what everything is. Okay. Um, so that's our first camera. Now currently that's not going to do anything apart from just rotate to face the player as he moves around. But the problem is if we go to the player and move him around a bit, you know, we'll, we'll go behind a wall. It won't really do anything, right? Because we don't, there's nothing else to do, right? We'll just keep following it because there's nothing we can change to. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to add another VC cam. I, I keep calling VC cams because it's CM, V can, I, you know, or I guess it's V cam, so it's VCM, uh, whatever. D duplicate, you got another one. Go get another angle, right? Another view. So let's maybe say here, okay? Control shift. And we've got our second camera there. So one there, two there. Um, now that we've made the second camera, let's just call it cam two. So if you go to the parent, we notice how we've got both of them here. Um, and the order, I don't think it's really that important because in the end, it's going to go for um, whichever one can see it, right? So like it won't, even if we put the second one to the top, so long, like if the players, for example, if we put the player over here, did I drag that right axis? That, that looks weird. But anyway, uh, if we get to the point where this camera can't see the player, and we put that as the top camera, even though it looks like it's got it selected, when we press play, it should. No, okay, the reason it's not done that is because we haven't actually set these cameras up properly. So, um, if we go to VCam1, you'll notice how we have a collider. And that's added by default, the script. So what we want to do is we want to go to avoid obstacles, which basically means, you know, we're going to try and see the thing. And if there's any obstacles, then we have to take them into account. So you tick that, avoid obstacles. And there's some parameters you can change. But real in reality, you don't really have to change any of these. Um, just read through them if you want. They've got good, like, nice little notes documentation for how they work. Um, I'm sure if you looked up online, you could get more information. The point is you want to check avoid obstacles on them all because that's what makes you be able to see the thing unless it's behind obstacles. So there you go. You notice how even though I set that of one to the top, it's now put the other one back because it's the only one that can see the player. And then we're going to take the player and we're going to move it behind the wall. And now this is the only one that's in sight. And as I said, you go back and we've got another one, right? Now, obviously you might want three. Let's say, what if the player goes behind this wall? No one can see it behind the wall. So let's, um, you know, duplicate. Obviously, if you're duplicating and you've checked that box anyway, it'll be checked because you've duplicated it. Control shift F, we've got a view over here. And the difference in setting that priority order is like, which would it go to first if there's two visible? Or you can set the priority, which is basically the same thing, I guess. So if we go, we can see the player and he's gonna go behind. What am I setting? Oh, right, whoops, I've been moving the cameras. All right, player. So move the player, he goes behind here. We've got him and now let's move him on the Z till he goes out of view of us. So like around here and move him to the side and he goes to this camera. Obviously he's gonna stay in this camera until he goes over here and he's back to the start. He could run over here and then as soon as he loses us, he's gone back to this one and then he goes back over here and he's gone back to this camera. So that's set up a scene with walls basically and these cameras always have view of the player, assuming that like there are, there's a camera that can see everywhere. Well, let's say there was like a wall and no camera behind it and you went behind the wall, then it obviously wouldn't change to a camera behind the wall because there isn't one. Um, now, yeah, so when the player's over here, for example, like over where I am, because I'm visible to that camera and that one, ignoring that because that's just the parent object, it will 
stay on the one if, if both these cameras have the same priority number so um, priority numbers there but you can see it here as well if they have the same priority number it'll just stay um, with the camera that could see it last so if I if I've been using this one and I move here it won't just change this one unless this one is a higher priority number because obviously priority just means we're gonna choose this one if it's even because it's technically not even so, so let's set VC1 to you know 12 or something you know 20 whatever something just a number that's higher than the actual value doesn't matter as long as it's higher if we now go to the player and move him up here and around as soon as we get past the end where like we can still see this but it's going to change because this camera over here has a higher priority number so that's <coughs> that's basically it to be honest i don't think there's much else to cover um if there is anything else you want me to cover with this um obviously feel free to ask but you know you should uh, try setting up a little scene like this, maybe having actual controls for the play to move around and just seeing what you can do with this. Um, I guess one skill in this is making it so the player doesn't get like disoriented, uh, disorientated when he moves around like walls and the camera's viewing from somewhere else. It just depends how you do your movement. Um, so yeah, I hope you like this video. If you haven't already, leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. Share this video with friends, whatever. Um, but apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.